Now our webinar on cold form steel shear wall design examples and solutions. This is based on the latest building code. We've updated it to the 2018 IBC and the California building code that goes with it. And uh, so this is the first time I'm giving this presentation uh, in this format. We've given it in other format. But we're going to cover all the bases, and uh, we've got some, some neat things to show you to you during the course of the presentation today. Um, as Maria mentioned, it's going to be three presentation sessions, approximately 35 to 40 minutes each. Uh, and these times are all flexible. So we're starting around 11 o'clock, and we will end by 2.30 or 2 and a half hours from now, 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, but in between, these may vary a little bit. But once we do go to break, those breaks will last five minutes, and the Q&A session will at last only as long as we have questions. So any time during my presentation, any slides up, you can make sure and type your questions in. Also, if you look at the very bottom center in the gold bar is the slide number. This is slide number two. So if you have a particular question about a particular slide or you want me to go back to a particular slide, make sure and make a note of the slide number or include the slide number in your question, and we can certainly make it back to that. Today's learning objectives are all about cold form steel shear walls. And actually, a lot of the principles that have to do with cold form steel shear walls apply to other types of construction. So other types of light frame construction. So how you lay that out, how the diaphragm interacts with them, how the loads are transferred uh, is very similar with uh, cold form steel and light frame uh, stick built wood construction. And we're seeing more and more mid-rise systems that use steel framing in conjunction with concrete slabs and composite deck, with bar joists, with, with or without composite concrete on top. Um, lots of different floor systems are being used in these, and it's, so it's good to know about how these shear walls can tie into the different ones. Um, we'll talk about the design process, including calculating deflections, stiffness of shear walls, the differences between type and 1 and type 2 shear walls, and why one might be better than the other. Uh, we're going to re review examples with both structural wood and sheet steel sheathing, which are the primary ways uh, the fuse mechanisms for resisting earthquake loads. We're going to look at examples with both structural wood and steel sheathing, understand the boundary element design, why omega naught is required, and how that's incorporated in your design, what the code requirements are for the collectors and their connections, uh, the proper way to design hold downs, what happens when you transition to a slab below, and whether or not you have to continue that overstrength factor through it. And then we'll look at some details of how you get some of these shear wall loads through the floor. And actually, most of those will be through some pictures that are the latter part of this presentation. Um, if you missed it earlier, when Maria said it, if you look at the box at the lower right, you'll see the file, which is uh, to today's uh, presentation. And it's basically a PDF, so you can follow along and potentially take notes. So, Real world, we've had a couple of lateral events today. I think there was a relatively minor earthquake, a magnitude 4.2 earthquake in Southern California. As of a few minutes ago, when I checked the, my news feed on it, there had not been any damage reported, so that's a good thing and a testament to the good construction and building codes that we have in this country and throughout North America. And also, we've got a storm bearing down on the Caribbean and the East Coast. Uh, right now, it's over the Dominican Republic. It's not a hurricane yet, a tropical storm, but you still get some sizable wind and rain. And uh, so these are the reasons why it's so important to provide good lateral systems, to be able to brace against storms, to brace against earthquakes. Uh, the East Coast engineers have the, the uh, luxury of being able to see their storms come. Uh, with earthquakes, not quite so much. They, they happen, and you get the damage or the response, and then you go on from there. So hopefully we're going to design our shear walls properly, our buildings properly, and not worry as much about damage. As mentioned earlier, this is based on the 2018 Inter International Building Code, the 2019 California Building Code, which was adopted uh, primarily from, based primarily on the 2018 IBC. 
of the reference documents in both the 2018 IVC and the 2019 CVC are ASCE 7, Minimum Design Load for Buildings and Similar Structures, uh, a, um, AISI, American Iron and Steel Institute's two standards. The first one is the North American Standard for Full Form Steel Structural Framing, that's AISI S240, and that's the uh, 2015 edition, and also AISI S400, the North American Standard for Seismic Design of Full Form Steel Structural Systems, and the version that's adopted in the code includes Supplement 1, which had some minor changes before that latest code was released. So I'm abbreviating this. When, when I talk about this document in the presentation, I'll just say S400 or S415. We'll not read through the whole thing about Supplement 116, but that's the version that it's going to refer to in this presentation. 